Hello, this is Guru for Toronto, the Pikiri Tershakali system. And in this video, I'm going to show some movements with the Tongan War Club or the Akao Tao. Uh, this war club is made by Volpi's training. It's a polymer war club. It's supposed to be a trainer, but it's a it's actually a legit weapon uh, on its own. I have this one fashioned with the kind of a concave tip instead of the uh, convex tip for a very specific reason and I will show you um, why. So we'll start with the grip or at least the way I grip it. I hold it this way in the middle so well almost in the middle. My right hand will be right at the neck just below the blade and my other hand will be about here. Okay. It could be held all the way in the end as well but I choose to hold it here so that it's a pretty balanced grip. It's a hefty weapon, okay? Very heavy on one end. If you, if you hold it all the way in one end like this, it gets very heavy on the other end. So uh, unless you are taking out several opponents uh, that are surrounding you or finishing off you know, a single opponent with one uh, powerful blow, you're probably going to be fighting and gripping it in this manner, okay? So that's how I would grip. Now, typically people would, you know, would choose a, a one strong side, right? Either on this side or they'll be on this side. But I've discovered um, researching other martial arts that, um, you know, a weapon of this kind, you can, or often switch your grips. So here's a one way I train or practice to switch grips, right? So let's say I'm holding it in this manner and you're, you switch grip this way. So as you may or may not be able to tell, I am sliding my hands on the surface of the club. Okay. And the, the blade side hand is kind of lifting, lifting the club. And then as it gets more vertical, this is, this is when I slide both hands. Okay, so now it's on the, the my, my blade hand is now my left. Same thing, if I'm to switch to the other side again, I'm just going to lift the, the blade end and let it slide like that. Now, you know, obviously people, you know, you can do this as well. <laughs> um, this is kind of um, my way of learning to, you know, uh, keep my weapon, keep my, sorry, keep my hands close to the weapon, okay? So if I'm using it in this manner, if I switch, it's always, right? It's always in contact or somewhat in contact with my weapon. I'm not losing it completely. Again, there's nothing wrong with doing this or switching it like this. Just probably you, you would typically see in a lot of uh, tribal arts. So I guess it's a, uh, you know, it's worth practicing both. All right. So, you know, you can kind of, you know, get a feel for how you're how you're going to be able to handle your weapon as you're moving about twirling and all that okay but again this is a this uh, sliding method is a it's a good way to kind of you know develop your sensitivity and your dexterity some basic striking as you can tell again one end is uh, bladed or shaped kind of like a paddle and then you just have the, the shaft for the, the other end. This one has a pommel end so you have a nice uh, stopper so that your hand doesn't slide completely off the, the club and you can also use this to, to strike. So with the strikes, uh, the most obvious way is to strike down like a like a two-handed sword almost right 
again because it's a it's a hefty piece of a club right holding it like this you're gonna get tired really really quick especially if you're swinging this several times with power so if you want to be able to do this repeatedly right and kind of preserve your stamina a little bit you hold it more on the middle so obviously if you're gripping the weapon here in the middle this is more of a close quarter fighting method right um, that's another thing I discovered when I practice that uh, war clubs are primarily uh, close quarter fighting weapons they're not really for long range that's what they have uh, spears and javelins for uh, so this is a uh, yeah close quarter fighting grip so again the basic strikes one two one two so I'm choosing a diagonal okay because again this is a uh, primarily influenced by my own training close quarter striking is diagonal across the bridge of the nose across the bridge of the nose forehand backhand forehand backhand now, so as, as I follow through with these strikes I try not to kind of bend my wrist too far like that too much okay when you practice your striking mechanics you learn to understand the full range of motion of that particular strike so in this case when i do a, a forehand strike see where my left hand ends up this is as far as it'll go so it really makes no sense to do that okay? unless you were you know you 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 delivered a strike so so powerful that you know you, you had a little bit of trouble controlling the controlling the uh the follow through but I would practice it this way one two and forehand backhand forehand backhand you'll also notice that I am letting it rest on my shoulder uh, my system would call this chambering so you chamber you chamber yeah. so you chamber it on your shoulder there one then two one and then two okay so uh, obviously there are other angles but we'll start with that next is uh, thrusting or jabbing okay yeah this is a you know despite its length this is actually a, a short range weapon so you're not going to be thrusting the same way you would thrust with a spear you can it's just again if you hold this weapon and you feel how heavy it is you're probably not going to want to do that a whole lot okay so it's going to be limited to about thrusting this far so if you look at the edge of the screen and that's that's how that's how far the target is or my opponent this is as far as I would probably go I wouldn't want to be doing this okay where I'm feeling starting to feel uh, off balance so uh, if you were to combine your slashing or cutting motions with your thrust you got one two three one two three one two three okay when i thrust i'm aiming obviously towards the center line of the body so if i was aiming towards the face move a little close you see that if I were to shove this into your face, it's gonna it's gonna hit you right between the eyes. And this nice 
uh, concave shape. See, your the bridge of your nose will go into that little that little notch there, and then these things, these prongs here, will go to your eyes. If I were to aim this towards the throat, then same thing. The idea is to catch the throat just below the jaw. Okay, I mean you can hit, you know, the throat right here too. In any case, you know, if you hit the throat, I don't think that guy is gonna argue if you did it wrong or not. Okay, um, it's gonna hurt really, really bad. So, eyes and throat. Yes, you can thrust into other parts of the body, but I think these were really do the most damage. Right? You notice that I'm not, um, I am not yet the, doing the switching the grip, okay? that, but that'll be next. So for now, we're doing this two strikes and the thrust combo with the same standard grip. One, two, move the, move the pommel over, three, okay? So you'll notice again, after the two, see, I stop here. I move the bottom around. My, my, for, uh, my forehand is going to act like the fulcrum and the, the other end is the, the lever, right? So, so see if I'm here, one, two, there. And you notice when I bring the bottom over, see how it flattens? Now it's ready to be thrusted towards the towards the throat or between the eyes. One, two, boom. Okay. Let's say I wanna add the, I wanna switch my grip now, okay? When you deliver these slashing strikes, okay? You can just do the forehand and then switch hand again now when you deliver that number three thrust so you can do it without having to without having to bring the bottom of the staff over so you can do the thrust right you can go slash switch slash thrust okay in fact you can go slash thrust slash thrust Slash thrust, slash thrust. Okay, so that's a you know fairly easy introductory uh, striking with the with the Tongan War Club. If anybody has any questions, just uh, comment comment below on the on the video, and uh, I'll see what I can do about those. Uh, anyway, thank you for for watching and. I, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you on the next one.